Okay. Well, welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. So my name is Sanal Singh, and I'm a third year medical student at St. George's University. And I'm very excited to be your MSIG vice president in this coming year. A very warm welcome to all of the medical students and residents joining us today. And a huge thank you to our esteemed panel for taking the time out to share their experiences with us. Thank you. Some quick housekeeping before we begin. The webinar will be recorded and posted on the student page of the AMSSM website for your future viewing. So please remember to log in to your account to access the link. Um, we will begin today by introducing our speaker panel. Then I'll encourage each of our speakers to please share their background story with our viewers. And next I'll ask our speakers to provide their insight on a few select questions. And lastly, we'll take some questions from the medical students and residents who are tuning in. So please go ahead and send us any questions you have throughout the webinar. You can send them through the chat and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible during the last part of our webinar. Thank you again. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll introduce the AMSSM members on our speaker panel today, beginning with Dr. Bernhardt. So Dr. Bernhardt is a professor in the Department of Pediatrics, Orthopedics and Rehab at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. He's the head medical team physician for the University of Wisconsin Athletic Department and the co-director for the Primary Care Sports Medicine Fellowship. He has previously served on the AMSSM Board of Directors and the AAP Committee on Sports Medicine and Fitness Executive Committee. Dr. Bernhardt has served as a co-editor for the last two editions on the pre-participation evaluation monograph. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Bernhardt. Next, Dr. Coleman is a pediatric attending at Children's National Health System. She completed her undergraduate and medical studies at Emory University and her pediatric residency at Children's National in DC. Following residency, Dr. Coleman became a physician analyst with the children's IT department. She also worked as a general pediatrician, on-call hospitalist, and neonatal fit pediatrician. Dr. Coleman completed a one-year sports medicine fellowship at Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital in South Georgia before returning to Children's, where she now works as a general pediatrician and sports medicine physician in the Goldberg Center for Community Pediatric Health. She provides sports medical coverage for local athletic events. Dr. Coleman is also an AMSSM board of director and also serves as a chairperson of the membership committee, which is the committee under which the MSIG falls. So thank you, Dr. Coleman. And she's also the co-leader of the Diversity Special Interest Group. Thank you. Next, Dr. Halstead, who's joining us today, received his medical degree from the University of Wisconsin Medical School after completing a residency and chief residency in pediatrics at the University of Wisconsin Children's Hospital. He completed a pediatric and adult sports medicine fellowship at Vanderbilt University. He currently serves as a consultant for the St. Louis Blues and is a team physician for Washington University and several local high schools, and is a former team physician for the St. Louis Rams. Dr. Halstead has served as an elected member of the American Academy of Pediatrics, Executive Committee for the Council on Sports Medicine and Fitness, as well as the Board of Directors of the AMSSM. He also serves as a member of the Advisory Committee for the Missouri State High School Athletic Association. He was the leader the lead author of the American Academy of Pediatrics Clinical Reports on Sports-Related Concussions and Returning to Learning After Concussion. Dr. Halstead has been an invited speaker extensively around the United States and the topics of pediatric sports, medicine, and concussions. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Halstead. Next, Dr. Couchers is a pediatric and sports medicine specialist and a co-owner of Active Kid MD in Anaheim Hills, California. He obtained his medical degree from the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and spent three additional years in Madison for his pediatric residency. Dr. Couchers then completed a one-year sports medicine fellowship with UC San Diego. In 2008, Dr. Couchers fulfilled a lifetime dream by serving as the medical team physician for USA Volleyball and Table Tennis in the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics. He is currently the team physician for the US men's and women's national volleyball teams. Cal State Fullerton Intercollegiate Athletics and the Chapman University Dance Department. Dr. Couchers is currently a mentor for pediatric residents and medical and athletic training students and speaks at local, regional and national conferences on sports medicine topics. He completed a six year elected term as member of the executive committee for the American Academy of Pediatrics Council on Sports Medicine and Fitness. 
Dr. Couchers has also authored over 25 published articles and served as a co-editor for the textbook, Pediatric Sports Medicine, Essentials for Office Evaluation that was published by Slack Incorporated in 2013. Still a dedicated athlete, Dr. Couchers enjoys mountain biking, yoga with his wife and coaching and or chasing their three children. Thank you, Dr. Couchers for joining us. Next, Dr. Kirke is a board certified in pediatrics and has a certificate of added qualification in sports medicine. She has spent her life on the West Coast, grew up in Seattle, attended Gonzaga University, then attended medical school at the University of Washington. She completed her pediatric residency at University of Washington and Seattle Children's Hospital and served as chief resident. She completed fellowships in primary care sports medicine and medical education at University of California, Los Angeles, go Bruins. And she is now an assistant clinical professor in the Department of Pediatrics and Department of Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. She is an associate director for the University of Washington Pediatric Residency Program. She also serves as co-medical director for the athletic training program at Seattle Children's Hospital and helps cover local high schools. Outside of work, her loving home includes her husband and three little kids. Thank you, Dr. Kitikit. Lastly, Dr. Street Callender is a native of Barberton, Ohio, a graduate of Smith College who also spent a year at Spelman College and she competed in collegiate basketball. Her medical interest began in high school and developed through encouragement by her father to become a physician. She obtained her medical doctoral degree from SUNY Syracuse Upstate Medical University, completed her internal medicine and pediatrics residency at Wayne State University, DMC, and sports medicine fellowship at Henry Ford Health Systems. She currently resides in Macon, Georgia, serving as medical director for concussion and sports medicine and associate professor at Mercer University. She enjoys spending time with her husband, Charles, and sons, Victor and Winter, along with traveling when it is safe, jogging, skiing, and reading. Dr. Street Callender serves as the vice chairperson of the AMSSM membership committee. Thank you again, Dr. Callender, for that work. And she's also a co-leader of the Diversity Special Interest Group. So thank you again to all the speakers for spending this time of your evening with us today. If you could please now share with us your story and the path you took to get where you are today. If possible, let's go ahead and first start with Dr. Um, Bernhardt. Sure, thank you for the introduction and um, help in organizing um, this webinar. And um, I'm sure all of us have a little bit different story. Um, I am one who, just for those of you who are uh, undergrad students, didn't get into med school the first time around and um, did a little bit of an extra semester of uh, graduate uh, student level work to prove to the medical school admissions committees that I could handle that kind of workload. Um, and then um, after that semester, I decided that I was going to try out my one true love, which was coaching high school track for one semester, which was awesome. And then I got into medical school in New York. I went to medical school for two years in New York and then transferred back to the University of Wisconsin. My high school track coach planted this seed in my head that there was this new field of sports medicine and that I should look into it. And so when I started medical school, um, I thought I was gonna be an orthopedic surgeon and do sports medicine. And I had my orthopedic surgery rotation as a third year medical student. And I distinctly remember not liking orthopedic sports medicine. I remember that at the time, the surgeon would be doing elective ACL reconstructions from eight in the morning until midnight. And then we would have to, they wouldn't actually be outpatient surgeries back in the day. So he would be off the next day and the students would be rounding on these inpatients one day post-op. And I said, this lifestyle is not for me, number one. And number two, the patients are asleep all the time. And my very next rotation after I hated the sports medicine rotation, uh, which was orthopedic surgery based was pediatrics. And I loved the general pediatric rotation. And one of the outpatient attendings at the time was Greg Landry, who started the Pediatric Sports Medicine Fellowship here at the University of Wisconsin. And I uh, was lucky enough to be his third fellow. And then I was lucky enough to finish fellowship and have a job opportunity to work at the University of Wisconsin as a general pediatrician part of my life and a primary care sports medicine physician part of my life. 
And as part of that, I was a team physician for the UW athletic department. And it was a dream come true. Um, I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. I grew up as a huge Badger fan, but you quickly realize as a sports medicine physician that it's not all about being a fan. It's really about taking care of the individual athlete. And the goals are to get them to graduate from college, have them be happy. And then the gravy on top is having them be successful in sport um, rather than the priority of being successful in sport, be happy and graduate from college. I try and take it from, you know, just from experience and probably as a parent, what I'd want my kid to do. Um, and those are really the goals that I strive for when I'm taking care of the um, athletes at the athletic department level. Um, I pretty much looked as, at Dr. Landry as a mentor and role model in terms of how involved he became with the American Academy of Pediatrics. And he's one of the founding members of AMSSM. And I wanted to give back. And um, I would encourage anybody who gets into the field, whether you're in pediatrics or sports medicine, um, to really look at how to give back and become a mentor and a role model for others. Um, because it's really, if you think about it, how many patients you touch individually in your clinic versus if you're a mentor, a role model, a teacher, um, how many other patients you're really touching by um, having those people then go out and take care of patients, it's astronomical. In terms of my daily life, just to give you a little bit of flavor, I have three half days of general pediatrics where I do have residents in my continuity clinic one half day a week, and then I have a medical student in a clinic one other half day a week, and I have a clinic all to myself one half day a week. And then I have four half days of primary care sports medicine where I see kids and adults. And um, I have two half days of being one of the team physicians for the UW athletic department. And um, my half day of admin time is partly done as a fellowship director in terms of trying to organize our fellowship and uh, be a role model and mentor for our fellow in combination with being a head medical team physician with the UW athletic department. Pretty much all of my free time right now is consumed by COVID decisions, COVID policies, and COVID testing type of um, issues, which we all know we weren't necessarily trained in, but it's um, a good example of, again, being an adult learner and learning on the fly and using um, what we learned in medical school in terms of trying to make decisions um, that are in the best interest of our patients. So I think with that, I'm going to stop, and it's um, I'm happy to answer questions um, either that you um, send in by chat for sure. Well, I'll send my, I'll put my email in the chat um, later if people have questions that way and I'll turn it back to you. Great, thank you, Dr. Bernhardt. Uh, Dr. Coleman, would you mind sharing with us? Okay, let's see. Uh, I, hold on, I took some notes, let me find them. Okay, well, let's see. So um, I was one who was always interested in pediatrics like my whole life. Uh, when I started in med school, everybody was like, oh, you're going to change your mind. You're going to do something else. No, I, I, I liked a lot of other things, but I, I loved peds always. And so I'm just, just designed to work with kids. I mean, adults are okay, but I, I, I love working with kids. So I went the expected route because my whole life I knew this is what I was going to do. And they say, well, when you want to do medicine, you do this. And so I followed that. I did, you know, I did well in high school, went to college, went to med school, and then did residency. There we go. Just like expected, no pauses. Uh, and then when I finished, so um, there were actually about half of us who didn't have a job. <laughs> we really hadn't planned past that. Uh, so um, I wound up working in our IT department, uh, helping our hospital shift from paper, uh, which probably nobody really has that anymore, but we were on paper and we switched to uh, electronic ordering. That's pretty much all we did and some nursing documentation at the time. And, uh, and so I hadn't thought about sports because we didn't have a sports person. And I was, I, I did tons of sports when I was little, but I was blessed. I never had an injury. So I, I didn't really think about sports at all until after residency at a case conference. Uh, and the expert that day was a Pete's sports person. And I was like, I didn't know you could do that. That's amazing. So um, I met with her as Becky Demarest, um, who worked with David Bernhardt. Um, I, and I, she, um, she said, well, you can just go and you can go and do it. And I was like, <laughs> I know nothing. So that, that was not happening. I knew I needed to be trained in somehow. So I, um, I applied. I, I just say I, I met with her and I think the next week I applied for fellowship. I think just the timing uh, was right. And um, I applied to like 18 places and I got two <laughs> interviews uh, and I didn't get, didn't get it. <laughs> uh, but I got some good advice at the time. And um, 
And they recommended um, I join the organizations, go to the meetings, shadow somebody, and I shadowed Becky for a while, go to some events. I, I went to some events um, at GW, which is um, associated with children's. And um, the next year I applied and I, I got my fellowship. Uh, three interviews <laughs> instead of the two, um, but still 18 programs applied. So not the greatest, uh, not the greatest ratio, uh, but still you only need, you only need one uh, for it to work. Uh, thinking back, uh, although I did, I love peds and I knew that. Um, and when you look in general in the media, the people who do sports medicine are not pediatricians. You know, they're like orthopedists and stuff. So I didn't really think of sports medicine as a career for me. Uh, but um, when I think back, um, my parents would watch football games and I was like playing with something else. Uh, if someone got hurt, I just stopped what I was doing and I watched the medical team. So I always kind of had this interest. I thought it was just because I liked medicine, but I think maybe it was. I like sports medicine. Uh, and then they would wheel the person off and I'd be like, oh, the game's back. And I would go and do whatever I was doing again. So it was um, maybe something that I've always kind of had an interest in. I just didn't know it at the time. Uh, so um, let's see, so fast forwarding to now, um, I do not have a typical day. Every day is different. Uh, I, um, I have different hours for each day. I'm in a different place each day and in different clinics within, within a day. Uh, but I do a combination of pediatrics um, general pediatrics, adolescent medicine, and sports medicine. Uh, and I'm now also on our EHR coaching and optimization team. So I work on that too. Uh, and for a period of time, I worked in our, um, our weight management clinic uh, as well. So I've done like a nice mix of things. Uh, I, I also am welcome to any questions because uh, uh, I, I also, like, like David, had a little bit of a different um, uh, route or I had that kind of break uh, in my application cycle. So. I will pass it on or pass it back. Thank you, Dr. Coleman. Uh, Dr. Halstead, would you like to share yeah. with us? Sure, absolutely. Thanks for uh, having me. So you'll, you'll, you'll hear a lot of theme of linking back to Wisconsin a little bit with a lot of people there because there's a lot of pediatric origins from there. Um, so I, I'm also a, a grad from Wisconsin. I um, I knew in high school I wanted to go into medicine. Actually, my original aspirations, I thought I was gonna be a pediatric heart surgeon. Uh, until I figured out that how long it took to do that. Although when I look back at it, the training route that I took probably wasn't too far off of what it eventually went to be before I was finally out in practice. But, um, but uh, I knew that just that wasn't going to be the, the lifestyle for me. And um, so I, uh, going into med school, I knew I wanted to work with kids. Uh, and so um, my first year of medical school, we had a program, I believe it was called GPP at the time, the Generalist Partner Program, uh, where we would be partnered up in our first year of medical school with a general practitioner uh, who would help us uh, to learn how to take histories and physical exam and all that kind of fun stuff that you learn early on in the process. And I happened to be partnered with Greg Landry, so you've heard his name before, um, and found out that he did pediatrics and sports medicine. I'm like, hmm, I hadn't heard of this possibility before. Uh, I like the idea of, of uh, working with active people who wanted to be healthy rather than people who were sick all the time. So uh, I thought that was a good combination of doing working with kids and working with kids who wanted to be athletic. So I kind of shat along with him along the course of medical school and then uh, fortunately got to be partnered up with uh, Dave Bernhardt as my uh, mentor for my, uh, my continuity clinics during my residency program. And I stayed on there for an extra year as a chief resident. And then I uh, did my fellowship. Uh, it was a two-year fellowship down at Vanderbilt with uh, Andrew Gregory. And then uh, after that, I ended up uh, at Wash U uh, in St. Louis, where I've been for 16 years. Um, I've had all sorts of different roles here. Uh, my practice, uh, I'll just kind of give you a little flavor of what my day-to-day -day is like. Uh, I do clinic four and a half days a week. Uh, three of those days, uh, I will see a combination of adult and kids, although the vast majority of that is kids and adolescents. Um, and then a day and a half is exclusively just for kids. So uh, the clinic space I'm at right now, this is I actually am uh, the clinic director for our one of our, out, um, our satellite sites for our orthopedic department. Um, so, so that's where I'm sitting in my office there right now. And uh, so I'm here three days a week, and then the other two, I work at our children's uh, uh, hospital outpatient uh, clinic to see um, patients there as well. And then I also have a half day of administrative time, which is basically all the, the busy work stuff and um, 
doing all the administrative things that I need to do uh, for my role as a clinic director. Um, I've had all sorts of other ancillary roles. I, I'm one of, I think, I think there's four of us who uh, were pediatric trained that have been in the NFL. Um, so I work with the St. Louis Rams as one of their team physicians for 11 seasons. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Um, I'm actually honestly glad I don't do it anymore. Not that um, it wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. It's just, you know, I, I've been there, done that. Um, so uh, I actually enjoy my having my Saturdays and Sundays off uh, now that were not uh, possible before. Um, I've had roles in, in leadership positions, as was mentioned. So I've been on the AAP executive committee. I've been on the AMSSM board of directors. Um, I have other hats that I serve in other uh, advisory committees. Um, my latest endeavor uh, over the last year, uh, going back to my, my days of being a college DJ at uh, University of Wisconsin, is uh, I've taken up podcasting. So I have actually two podcasts now that I host. Uh, one very creatively called the Pediatric Sports Medicine Podcast, and then the other one, which is kind of more for uh, healthcare professionals, and then we do one that's also called the Healthy Young Athlete Podcast, which is um, geared more towards parents and coaches and athletes, um, kind of talking about kind of the common questions we see in clinics. So um, I find that that's probably a good one also for medical students and residents to listen to as well, because it, it has things kind of it's kind of starter, beginner kind of stuff. So it's good things to get your uh, get your feet wet with some stuff. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on from there. Great, thank you, Dr. Halstead. Uh, okay, Dr. Street Calendar, if you don't mind sharing. I'm just unmuting. I'm gonna check my uh, microphone. Does that, can everyone hear me? If you just nod. Yes. I'm holding my two-year-old, so I'm not going to oh. put them on camera. <laughs> um, so my background is um, internal medicine and pediatrics. Um, I actually became interested in medicine by a um, um, encouragement of my father, actually. He, when I was looking for what field I might want to go into as a high school student, I was interested in, in, in the medical area and I'd never seen anyone who was African-American as a physician and never met an African-American woman as a physician. And so I had a lot of examples of nurses and said, maybe I'll do nursing. And my father said to me, well, have you ever considered medicine? Nursing's wonderful, but maybe you wanna look at other options as well. And I said, well, I never thought someone like me could do it. And he said, well, way before Obama ever coined the phrase, he said, yes, you can. And so um, I went into looking at medicine as a career and found that I um, enjoyed what some of the physicians were doing as people allowed me to shadow them. And I went to medical school um, more, I mean, I went to undergraduate more I'm looking for a good undergraduate so that I could get into a medical school um, more than playing a sport. And I was um, fortunate enough to be able to play intercollegiate athletics as well at the school where women's basketball originated um, and had a wonderful time doing that along with um, studying to uh, get into medical school, which I have to commend all the student athletes that are able to do those, both of those. It was a extremely tenuous task. Um, and um, I think in some ways, because I wasn't in a division one school, I had it a little easier than some of our other student athletes who are trying to do something similar. But then I went to medical school. And if you look at my high school um, aspirations, I said I wanted to be a cardiothoracic surgeon. I actually forgot about that. Until one of my uh, <laughs> high school teammates uh, sent me a Facebook page and said, what about that cardiothoracic surgery? And I was like, oh yeah, I left that alone a long time ago. Um, and I went to, sure. yes, we heard. sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and so then I went to, I tell you, they want attention exactly when you start talking. <laughs> uh, so I went to medical school and I was fortunate enough to get orthopedic surgery as a first rotation, which all those people who wanted to go into orthopedic surgery were jealous about or were um, trying to get it. And I hated it. Um, 
I did find in it because my father had uh, was a builder and did a lot of building around. And so he forced us all to build our front porches and back porches and, um, you know, our bunk beds and tables. And, I, you know, I hated doing it, but I loved having the things and I loved the camaraderie of doing it with my brothers and my father. Um, but I hated orthopedic surgery, but I knew exactly what to do with all these tools because they were familiar to me, even though I didn't enjoy doing it. So I did well on that rotation, but I hated orthopedic surgery. And so at that point, I just sort of left every thought of maybe sports medicine or anything um, in the past. And I moved forward and I thought maybe I'd love pediatrics and I did pediatrics and I loved it. And then I did internal medicine and I enjoyed the thought process of that. And so I baffled with what I was going to do through medical student and settled in on um, doing med P. And I went to med P's residency at Wayne State University and um, when I got there, I started um, serving as a mentor. Our Med Peace program mentored an area, inner city high school in inner Detroit. I picked up a student that I mentored, a high school student that I mentored, and she happened to be the um, point guard of the basketball team. And so um, as I was mentoring her, and it wasn't for basketball, I was mentoring for, you know, career mentoring for this inner city high school. Um, I picked her up and I added another student as well. And she said, hey, um, Dr. Street, will you come to one of my basketball games? And I said, well, yeah, sure. And so I went to our basketball game and I, you know, I like basketball. I played college basketball. So it was interesting to me and I generally enjoyed it. I met her coach um, and she was like, will you come to another game? And I was like, sure. And her coach talked to me the second time I came to the game, we became friends. And so I started coming to all the girls basketball games. And he said, well, you come to our games. Why don't you be our team doctor? And I said, okay, sure. Let me just check with my program director and make sure that's okay. And I talked to him and he said, absolutely, that's okay. And I'll support you in that. And so I said, okay. And so I started going to all the girls basketball games. And then, you know, the boys basketball coach came to a couple games and said, well, wait a minute, you're going to the girls games, but you're not going to the boys games. He said, why don't you come to the boys games? And I said, okay, well, sure. <laughs> And then the athletic director said, well, you're going to the boys and girls games. Why don't you become our team doctor for the school? And I said, well, let me check with my program director. And he said, absolutely, I'll support you in that. And um, <laughs> I said, okay. And he said, well, we need to do some sports physicals. Will you do that? And I said, well, let me check with my athletic director, I mean, with my program director. And he said, absolutely, and I'll support you in that. And I'll come and do them with you. Um, and so we did that. And then the football coach found out I was doing basketball and girls and boys basketball and he said well wait a minute you can't do boys and girls basketball and not do football and I, he said why don't you become come to our football games too and I said well okay sure and so I got the basketball and then there was only one other sport that was contact it was soccer and eventually the girls soccer coach found out I was doing girls and boys basketball and football and she was like well wait a minute you can't not do girls soccer and I said yeah you're right so I'll do that too so I ended up becoming by default these, um, the team physician for this inner city high school as a volunteer. I kept going through residency, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And finally my program director said, well, wait a minute, why don't you just do sports medicine? And I said, well, what's that? I'm not orthopedics. He said, well, you can do that from primary care and you're kind of doing it already. And so um, I looked into the field and found that it was probably a good fit for me and applied and matched. And so um, that's sort of my pathway to sports medicine. Uh, right now, I do kind of a combination. I'm about 50% sports medicine and 50% um, general peds. I do, a, I do both adults and kids in my sports medicine aspect and concussion clinics. So that's sort of where I encompass the adult medicine. I don't do a lot of primary care adult medicine, but I do do some primary care pediatric medicine. Thank you, Dr. Street Calendar. Uh, Dr. Couchers, would you mind sharing with us? Well, I think I'm gonna start off by thanking everybody. And at the end of this talk, we're gonna blame David Bernhardt because if it weren't for David and Greg Landry and the wonderful work they did at the University of Wisconsin, I probably would not even be here. And I'm gonna say I got really lucky in my path. Uh, when I graduated UCLA, go Bruins. I applied to several medical schools, went and interviewed, and I ended up in Madison one day. And usually when I told people, hey, I want to go into pediatric sports medicine, I got this really nice, oh, that sounds great. 
they have no clue what to do. So I mentioned that in Madison and the assistant dean says, do you know where you are? I said, yeah, Madison, Wisconsin. Do you know who Greg Landry is? And the only Greg Landry I knew was the backup quarterback for the Detroit Lions. He said, you've got some learning to do. Now, this was before the internet, so I didn't do my homework, but I soon found I had picked the right place and I had great mentors. And so if you're hearing themes in this talk, number one, find a mentor. And when your time is right, become a mentor. Number two, the reason that I think I truly value pediatric and primary care sports medicine, we are truly the team behind the team. I can't tell you how many people I have met from athletic trainers to physical therapists to colleagues who I don't think their colleagues are some of my best friends. They're some of the people I can turn to. And over the past nine to 10 months, we've all been challenged with COVID. And people ask, how do you get through it? Not by myself by making phone calls, by reaching out. And there's no other group of professionals I have met who are ready to do that than sports medicine folks. So if this is a field where you want to continually be challenged, continually learn, but do it in a collaborative way, you found the right field. There aren't egos here. They get checked in at the door. If you want to advance in the field, you better learn how to work together. So it was partially the good fortune of being in Wisconsin, learning from some of the best in the field. Uh, I now work primarily with sports and but also general pediatrics in a two-person practice. Uh, my typical day, there's no such thing. Uh, it could be anywhere from seeing Olympic level athletes to a newborn. And I'm not sure which one cries more at the end of the day, but you deal with that. Uh, at the same time, I'm dealing with practice management, sometimes even promotional work. I've been getting pretty good with some social media stuff. But all in all, I think the part besides the team that you work with is the people you work with and watching kids grow, watching kids develop, uh, being around long enough that I've had kids who I've watched raise now bringing me their kids. That ages me a bit, but it's also a true value. And seeing them move on in life, like David said, graduating college and moving on, that's pretty impressive. Uh, trying to stay active myself. In fact, uh, one thing I will bring up is mindfulness. As you get into a field like medicine, it is pretty demanding. Probably the greatest thing that happened to me in the past several months is my daughter started driving. Not that that didn't raise my blood pressure, but as it is, I get to bike to work because there's only three drivers and two cars. So by biking to work, I get some downtime. So I really will look at all of you and say, get your mentors in place, become a mentor, but also take care of yourselves. Make sure you find what works for you and stay physically active. It will help you be a good role model for those young people that you mentor. And with that, I just thank you so much for this opportunity. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Catchers. So lastly, we have Dr. Kikit. Would you mind sharing with us? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, okay, the journey. Uh, I come from a little bit of a family of teachers. So my mom's a teacher and I grew up with all my side jobs working with kids a lot. Uh, worked in high school with kids uh, through college. Uh, so I went to college thinking about, but I, I, I also wanted to be a pediatrician. So like Naila, I went to college thinking I was gonna be a pediatrician. Um, and I got to play, I was really, uh, there's a lot of luck in my story too. I got um, lucky enough to get a, a scholarship to play basketball at Gonzaga. So I went to Gonzaga and played women's basketball. First day of practice, my freshman year, I tore my ACL. I uh, mm -hmm. went through the whole identity crisis of like being identified as an athlete for my whole life until my first day of college. And then like not knowing, nobody knew me in any capacity that way. So I went through that uh, sort of adjustment thought a lot about physical therapy because I had a great team that helped me um, with the physical and mental sides of um, getting back into sport. Um, it was that, ser that silly like story where then you're on the airplane with your team and then like somebody needs to call the doc and you're like, oh man, I do want to do that too if I needed to. I wanted to have that skill set if I needed to. So I found my way back into doing pre-med, um, spent my time as a student athlete MVP of the training room, ended up tearing my other ACL <laughs> in the playoffs my second year, uh, tore my meniscus my senior year, and uh, don't know why they kept me around. But anyway, so um, finished out college um, and needed some time to really kind of think about what I wanted to do. I thought I still wanted to be, be a pediatrician, 
but I needed to make sure that was what I wanted to do and realize that there was so much more to medicine than just being a doctor. So I went up in a, uh, as a very busy student athlete, I didn't really do a lot of the college thing um, as a college student athlete, as far as other extracurriculars. Um, so actually my brother was still in college. So I went up and lived uh, with my brother in a college town and I worked in the hospital uh, doing odd jobs. I was a phlebotomist. I worked in the radiology suite. Um, I was a transporter pushing patients around the hospital to and from radiology. Uh, and I coached on the side and I coached in the community, I coached volleyball and I coached basketball and applied to medical school. Um, also did not get in my first time to medical school. So I got to work for two years and learn more about myself and my community. And then um, second time around, got into medical school and went to the University of Washington, which is where I'm uh, in the area that I'm from. Um, still wanting to do pediatrics, told myself when I went through my rotations that I I had, to be, I had to tell myself that pediatrics wasn't an option because I knew I loved pediatrics. So to force myself, I basically said, pediatrics is off the table. They are not going to take you. So what else do you like? Um, to sort of push myself in that way. Um, ended up going into pediatrics, obviously got to stay and um, was there for residency, um, served as a chief. And then um, during residency, similar to what I'm hearing from other people too, my brother-in-law was younger, so he was in high school at the time and they didn't have anybody helping in any sort of capacity on the sidelines. And so I had asked if I could, I, that was a really great learning opportunity because it, it meant that not only going to my program director, but going and having meetings with a school athletic director and then a district athletic director about resources and how I could be doing this in a legal way, but also supporting schools. So, um, I was really lucky with mentors around me who signed off on that, said I could call them on a Friday night at any time, but was the only one on the sideline and learned a lot. Um, and then in my senior or in my chief year, thought a lot about what I wanted to do. Did I want to pursue that? Did I want to be a pediatrician that just kind of like did what I was doing there and learn on the learn as I go with mentors around me? Did I need a formal fellowship? I was thinking about wanting to start a family. Anyway, so all those things that you're thinking about at different milestones, perhaps in your life. Um, ended up um, trying to pursue a fellowship and said, if I don't get in, then that'll be the decision for me there. I, I got in and I went to UCLA and did uh, a two-year fellowship there. As a pedi pediatric um, resident at the time, I felt strong about my pediatric skills. I didn't feel as strong about my MSK skills and wanted to be able to really feel like I had a, a strong toolkit when I was done um, because I thought I would either join a pediatric practice and have a niche um, I think the other reason I wanted to go into pediatric sports medicine in the end is because I wanted an extra toolkit, but I wanted a really solid way that I felt like I could easily extend beyond clinic walls and, and, and do have a skill set within my field that I, could, it, that I could bring other places. So I love being on the sideline with high school athletes. I think it's at a time, but I didn't want to do adolescent medicine necessarily, but I love being able to bring kids back in. I love being able to be a medical home um, and bridge that gap at times. Um, at the end of fellowship, uh, I'd had my first child, which was, uh, which was amazing and changed the way that I thought about medicine. And I really needed more from my work at that point. Um, and also really needed to come home. My dad got diagnosed with metastatic cancer. And so um, another really just lucky, had an amazing program director from residency who basically created a job. There were changes going on in GME. So brought me in to be one of the associates program directors. He talked to orthopedics at the time. They didn't have a space, but created a, a clinic space for me for two days a week. And um, since then, I've had a few hats. So my uh, my day-to-day, -day, and I'm part-time because I, uh, and also my my day goes or my week goes on Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm I am um, helping and I do GME. So I run recruitment and I have other hats within the, the GME world. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I, I do primary care or primary sports medicine for pediatrics. As of two weeks ago, um, because because sports is slow, because things are picking up here in other ways, and because we needed to support our continuity clinics, I'm going back to primary care and have been doing primary care now for the last two weeks. Um, in addition, uh, so one day a week I'm doing primary care and one day a week I'm doing sports medicine, and um, I do medical directorship for our athletic training group. It's like 45 athletic trainers in the community. And then Fridays is mommy day. So I have three kids and um, we have a village and I'm the teacher on Fridays for our, uh, for our kids. And so there you go. 
I cover high schools on the sidelines. Um, I think echoing what everybody said, honestly, there are many people who I have, I have, I have, I have met and worked with but in some degree here that I, that I would echo have been mentors to me, whether you know it or not. Um, I've literally spent only one day with Dr. Bernhardt on my fellowship uh, interview, but it was incredible the way that you did that in the sense that you literally took me through a day in your life and shared with me aspects of, of, of your day and the ins and outs and the goods and bads. And I've never had a, a day like that with someone um, in that way. And, and so I think in, in echoing what people say about mentorship, I think you don't need to be, wait to be a mentor either. You, you don't know who you're, you're, you're touching lives every day and you don't know in what capacity. Um, so, and you'll never know sometimes unless you have a random visit for some reason and it comes up to let somebody know how they've touched your life in a way um, or they've, so along the cord of mentorship, I bet you all are mentors already at this point, whether you know it or not and how you approach all those around you. Um, and then the other thing, I think that's an, all the, an, an echoing thing about this and, and how we walk through life, whether it's, whether it's uh, sports medicine or being a, a provider, or a pediatrician, whatever is this humble walk that I think serves us all well. Um, humble to walk into a new practice, a new space and know that you're gonna learn every day and you're gonna learn from your patients, you're gonna learn from other people, you're gonna need to call on other people when you don't know the answer to best take care of your patients. And um, as long as you can have the mindset of not having too much pride to know that you're not supposed to know everything and being willing to um, just do what you think is right and ask for help, then you're gonna absorb much more in that process. So Nyla, uh, Nyla also came and rotated. Uh, when, I was a when I was a medical student, she came on her fellowship. And um, uh, I think I've, have, I, I cling to her every time, every national meeting I can, I can get at. And Shelly has been a, a wonderful mentor to me as well. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, doctor. I think I speak on behalf of all the students and residents today when I say it's really exciting and inspiring to hear all of your unique backgrounds. So thank you again for sharing with us. And honestly, you've done such an amazing job kind of covering all of the questions that I think I wanted to ask. So maybe we can revisit some of those questions just to provide some more insight. Um, so I was thinking in your perspective, and anyone can jump in on this, um, what are some of the personal traits you think that make an individual a good fit for you know, practicing sports medicine, but also pediatrics specifically? I think the obvious one, you gotta like kids. If you don't like kids, you're gonna be in big trouble. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, I, for me, uh, you know, my wife will tell everybody this all the time. It's just, you know, I, I, I get much more out of an interaction with a kid than I do with an adult. Um, I just think it, I love the ability to just sit and talk to them and recognize them and um, see them because uh, you know, I see that too often in my practice where they're, they're, they may not be seen or heard um, as I wanna be a voice for. So you know, my, my approach always when I talk to a kid, I talk and I face the kid and we, we interact and the parent can chime in when they get their chance, but, but I wanna hear from the kid. Um, and we have fun, you know, I, I, I do some practice too. So, um, seeing kids that break their arms and things like that from various falls and stuff, and we goof around and, and it's, it's fun. It makes your day more entertaining, um, uh, which is the part of dealing with the younger kids, I think is always a, a fun part of that. Uh, I agree with the, the humble part of that and, and being able to recognize what you don't know. Sometimes that's hard early on in your practice because um, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> and, and it's learning that along the process. But uh, it is, uh, I agree, it's great having great mentors and people that you can look back on um, and making those contacts along the way. And, you know, for all of us, as we've gotten further along, um, certainly for me and Chris and, and David is one of, one of the earlier people in the whole process of Pete Sports Medicine. There, there are more of us out there now uh, than there were. I, you know, my certification, I'm number 91. Uh, of who's PEDS board certified. Um, so, and I know there's a lot more since then. So it's great. It's, I, I love seeing our field grow. If anyone else would like to ask. I wanted to kind of jump in. Hi everyone. Um, I'm a, well, I'm Natalia. I'm a third year PEDS resident um, here in Houston. Um, uh, hoping to graduate and looking for primary care jobs, but sports medicine is something that 
interests me. And so obviously when, once I saw the email for this webinar, I'm, I'm like, sign me up. Let me hear all these amazing pediatricians talk. So it's been very refreshing and inspiring to hear you all talk about your journey. And so we'll see hopefully what the future awaits for me. Uh, but I guess my question particularly is, in terms of right once you graduated, once you did fellowship and right you're looking for a job, how did you, uh, how much is your voice or your decision in terms of um, how much time you wanna spend like, you know, primary care versus just sports medicine or is, um, is it more when you're affiliated to academic institutions or if you're in private, that's when you have to like kind of negotiate. I just wanted to have like an idea uh, if, and you wanted to pitch in on that and how do you uh, navigate those waters after right you graduate and get a job i know when i first finished i um, rejoined where i had done residency and there i was the first um, pediatrician and internist that, in our whole programs that had ever done pediatric sports medicine um, the um, chairman of our of our pediatric hospital was, she was very interested in growing that area and pretty much um, asked me to figure out what I might want to do and see how it would work to be able to both educate our resident physicians and pediatrics and um, uh, allow them to do better on the boards in those areas, but also provide another education. And our orthopedic, pediatric orthopedic department at that time was also very open to expanding this area. They were very much more into doing spine care um, and surgeries. And so they were open to um, adding someone that would then uh, focus on the non-operative components of um, sports medicine. So that's sort of where at least children's sort of opened up their doors to pediatric sports medicine and then added people from there. So I, I think there's probably um, in different places, you'll have a lot of flexibility and then other places may be more established. And I think some of the other members can probably speak to some of that as to how you get into or how it works with a more established program. But that was my experience in, um, as pediatric sports medicine was sort of getting off the ground at other hospitals um, across the country that weren't as big or weren't um, as developed in those areas. I'll jump in a little bit to try and answer your question, if that's okay. And I think um, when you're thinking about going to your, your final job or your final destination, think about what you really want it to look like. And then you're, you're a desired commodity. You know, they want, probably they need to fill a job if you're interviewing for a job there. And there may be deal breakers, but you're not gonna know what the deal breakers are unless you ask for what you want. And so, you know, one of our, the residency director when I was a pediatric resident said, you're in the driver's seat um, until they turn you away from that job. But if you're there, especially if you're there for a second interview and you say you want an office with a window and a desk um, and a secretary, you need to ask for that because all they can say is no. And then you have to decide what's the deal breaker. Is the deal breaker an office with a window? Is the deal breaker that you have Fridays off because you're teaching your kids on that day? Is the, you know, the deal breaker that you want Wednesdays afternoons off so you can golf with your friends? Um, you know, a lot, of, there may be personal reasons that you decide to take a job, but you have to decide what's the most important thing for you. In terms of balance related to the work part of it, I don't think it's easy to mix the sports medicine and the pediatrics together. So um, even the people I know in private practice who do some pediatrics and some sports medicine, don't usually do it at the same time. So you usually have designated time for your sports medicine practice and designated time for your peds practice. I would just add too, you know, um, an interesting story. So I, I'm, I'm in an orthopedic department. Um, I, I'm, that's my primary appointment is through the Department of Orthopedics. They pay my salary. Uh, I have a co-appointment in the Department of Pediatrics here as well. And I teach residents and, and um, for the peds program here. Um, but when I started my practice here, I was here pretty much just to do musculoskeletal care. And uh, a year or two into my, uh, my job here, I said I really wanted to start seeing patients for concussions because I, I had an interest in it. And, you know, this is 2006 now. And um, I was told by my business manager in the orthopedic department, well, I couldn't do that because 
I would make the neurologist and the neurosurgeons mad. And so they said I shouldn't, but I did anyways. So I made it on my schedule and it's kind of turned out pretty well for me to do concussion care and have an interest in concussion care because that's been kind of a big thing of my practice and in the area. So, you know, I, I, if you have an interest in something and you want to do it clinically and you know it's in your wheelhouse, don't let someone tell you that that you can't because honestly, a lot of times it is coming from an orthopedic department. They don't understand the primary care side of things and they don't know what other stuff that you have in your, your capabilities of what you can take care of and take care of well. Um, so I would just encourage you to continue to advocate for yourself of what you want your practice to be. I appreciate everyone's answers. Thank you. Thank you for the question as well. Um, and just with some of the time we have left, if anyone can kind of tell us, I know we talked about this a bit, but how has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted, you know, your usual practice and kind of what adjustments were you able to make? And maybe how was being a pediatric, you know, sports medicine physician really key to being able to help during these times? Well, I think having a primary specialty, um, maintaining your primary specialty has been very helpful. Uh, because if you were only doing sports and you hadn't done primary care in a while, getting to that would could be difficult, as Celeste might be experiencing in the past couple of weeks. Um, but uh, we um, in our hospital switched to telemed. We, we did a lot of that, uh, and uh, and um, that was unique. Trying to do a sports visit on telemed and trying to do some kind of an exam. Uh, and actually, I worked with a team for AMSSM on on. Um, creating some virtual exams are actually gonna be posted in the website shortly. So everybody can kind of see how to kind of get a patient to do what you want them to do uh, so that you can get a pretty good knee exam or shoulder exam or something like that. But, um, but that was a, a, a big thing is trying to figure out um, how to do your MSK exam or some kind of MSK exam on uh, telemedicine. And then just probably like everybody uh, who does any primary care, we've been doing lots of COVID testing. So we've been all the stuff and uncomfortable and you're sweating in there and and trying to see these patients and hoping you're not gonna get sick from them either uh, but that's been a big part of you know our clinic days uh, as well I think another factor that we've all dealt with is not only deal with our practices but the teams that we cover We're asked to review different policies procedures and I've learned a pretty important rule, which is if I have to make a big decision, I might get a call on, should we cancel this game or how do we handle this situation? I've often learned if I kick the can for about two hours, somebody more knowledgeable than I and or a higher pay grade than I will make the decision for me. But in all seriousness, it has been, uh, again, another test of the team approach that we utilize that we don't know the answers. This is brand new to many of us. So being able to communicate and I've seen some of my colleagues who aren't used to collaborative care kind of struggling, whereas those of us who, as pediatricians, we tend to be good people. We play in the sandbox well, and especially in the sports world, we're kind of used to sharing ideas. Uh, yes, we've been not been as busy. I think we're waiting for the day in California it may not be for a while that we can start to reopen. And by no means do I want to see kids get hurt, but I'm fearing that once uh, we're allowed to start playing, we're going to go from zero to 60 pretty quick. So we've been preparing for that eventuality. But I think what COVID's done has humbled us. Uh, we've definitely had to pivot. We've had to pivot to more virtual medicine. But I think it's also brought us back to our roots, being available for families. Families are so thankful that you're still there trying to care for them at a time when there's a lot of uncertainty. And again, you're not doing it by yourself. If I could just add, I think the other thing for me personally, and I think for others that COVID has brought out for my, me and my practice and, and thinking is, this comes out in other ways too, but has been emphasized for me in COVID is that as pediatricians, you're advocates, as pediatricians, you're teachers, right? And so we, I think many of us have probably been asked um, to speak about various aspects of COVID, whether it's about policies and procedures, or it's about kids not being in school and kids not being sport and what does that mean for them and what does that mean for their physical being well you know mental health etc and being able to speak to media or and or communities and or patients in front of you i think it's also really emphasized to me that um 
as as providers, regardless of if we're going to be subspecialized or not, the families that come to us all have needs that oftentimes we won't know about unless we ask. So a kid comes in for a fracture, I can still ask them about how COVID has been affecting their family and because it's affecting all families and asking questions around housing, food, safety, things that we know that are critical and important for all of our kids. So I think it is also just challenged to make sure that we also remember our many roles in being a part of these people's lives who've been, who are coming through our, through our doors. And I would echo the collaborative part of things that happen with this, you know, and I live in a red state. And so we've been uh, very open, so to speak, uh, for our sports. We have not shut down too much. Um, but when we were early on in the pandemic back in May, you know, sports medicine is actually a, it's a fairly um, competitive field for practices in different competing medical groups. And um, some of my colleagues at one of the other competing groups in town, um, yeah, family practice uh, sports medicine physician uh, put together uh, or put together kind of a proposal to have a task force uh, for sports medicine so we can guide people uh, how to reopen. And this was way early on in the process. And he asked us in our group and then another competing hospital group. And we had, we put together a task force of 11 people. We had sports medicine physicians, we had athletic trainers, we had physical therapists, we had cardiologists. And we put together guidelines for our area that got adopted by the state as far as what we felt would be safe ways of integrating sports back in. So it was a great way to collaborate with all of these other colleagues at other uh, institutions who we normally don't do a lot of collaboration at times, um, but they're all great people. And, um, and for us to be leaders, because there was no one giving anybody any guidance at that time. Um, so, so that was kind of a, a unique and, and fun and rewarding thing that we were doing at a time where honestly, there was not much else for us to do clinically in the practice anyhow. Um, so, so it gave us something to buy the time as well. Great, that's amazing. Thank you for that very insightful discussion. Um, great question and um, even more great advice. Um, sadly, we're at the end of our webinar. Um, I know we want to keep you here longer, but we can't. Um, so if there's any final you know, thoughts, insights, takeaways, anything quick that any of the speakers would like to share with the residents and students, we would appreciate any final thoughts. No, maybe. I'll just say in COVID times and beyond, to everyone, wherever you are in your in your path or your journey, just trust your trust yourself, trust your journey, uh, learn as much as you can. But but what I, all of our journeys have been just very very different, and you're on a path that is only yours. So go create your own story. All right. Well, if anyone else has any, if or if anyone doesn't have anything else, then um, I'll just uh, I'll echo what's left then. And also just say, um, even things that seem like little detours, hi, Winter, um, that seem like little detours or that seem like a kind of a wall in, in the way um, might not be. So um, take all of those things as experiences to, uh, to get to where you, you want to go. Thank you. Thank you again. And, uh, just, just to echo all of every, everyone said, I think um, we're all open to questions and um, to um, even offline and other times. You have a very collegial group. I think the pediatricians as a whole are very friendly and we are open to your questions, your, um, um, your queries, whatever you might have that comes up even in the future. We're happy to be helpful and to um, provide some guidance and even refer you to people that might have a similar path that you're trying to um, go in. So. Um, don't think that this is the end and you can't ask those questions after this because we're all really quite open to answering questions whenever you might have them. Thank you so much. And again, thank you to all of the AMSSM members um, for serving on our speaker panel. Um, you really, your time with us has been truly invaluable and I'm sure every medical student and resident tuning in will tell you that. Um, thank you to all the residents and the student members for attending tonight's very impactful webinar. And to any of those viewing us in the future, uh, really quick, so the MSIG is actually planning some more webinars for the year ahead. So please look forward to tuning into those. And we also always love to hear suggestions for new topics. So please enter any ideas you have in the chat 
or you can email them to us if you think about them later. I'll go ahead and drop the MSIG officers email in the chat now. Um, again, huge thank you to everyone um, for spending your evening with us. Please stay safe and motivated. Thank you and good night. Happy New Year. Good night. Yeah.